Hello, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel, I'm Simswitch and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. So in this one we're going to be taking on a couple of the races you unlocked at the final hurdle. So we're going to be doing this one in Deep Forest first of all in an RX-7. So this is my Le Mans cash cow tune that I'm going to show at the end of this week. As you see it's got the 787B engine, racing hard tyres. Uh, engines almost fully restricted, maximum ballast all in the middle, but this car is insane. I don't have anything else to tell you. It is insane, um, and its best attribute is its fuel. It's, I think, is it a 2.6 litre four rotor engine from the 787B? and you do not need to fuel save really with this car um, so in this race you see there starting off with 50 odd laps predicted uh, I think I did a little bit of fuel saving with this car but at this race at Le Mans you certainly don't need to fuel save properly um, you see there already up to 10 laps it's dropped down to 9 so just doing a bit of short shifting and you're going to easily win this race with this car. And you see how I've scythed through the first few cars already. This car, 500 brake, it is powerful. Um, for 700 performance points against Group 4 cars, I think the most powerful Group 4 would be the Veyron, which is about 430 brake, and this is 499. So into the first straight section of the track, you can immediately see why this car is so good and it's just blitzed away from quite powerful cars. I think the Tenza is quite a strong car in this class, so the Mustang should be quite a powerful car. So up behind the Mustang now look around the outside didn't quite pay off um, but that's 11th place we've made up nine positions at the end of lap one in this car and we're still looking at nine laps of fuel remaining I am short shifting a little bit um, but that's all you need to do you can keep it in fuel mix one completely unrestrict the power I didn't know whether there was going to be rain in this one I don't remember having any at all uh, the only part you need to be wary of is that final flat out section it can get a bit lively through the dip um, of the final corner and yeah th this car I don't know what else to say it is incredible for 700 performance points races it's almost unmatched I mean if you saw the Le Mans cash cow from yesterday the Nissan Silvia S13 from 1988. That is literally Le Mans and maybe Monza, but I don't think Monza has a race for it. Um, but this is this is an all-round car. This is a Le Mans tune, and it's working at Deep Forest quite well, um, which I wouldn't have expected. on the brakes into the final corner maybe a little bit too early um, but we're already looking at the back of the podium at the end of lap 2 um, from this car it is mind blowingly good performance again through that dip the car getting all unsettled and lively um, still got 9 laps of fuel remaining and we've only got 8 more laps to complete so th this car is is going to get the job done for you my RX-7 build which I'm quite proud of um, maybe it's just the engine swap has made it good uh, but I think I must have done something right for this car a, a tiny little bit I must have done right Whereas that Nissan Silvia is just power. 
and not wearing out your tyres. There was tyre wear in this one, but I didn't bother pitting because the fuel was fine. As you see here, into this corner, onto the straight, or the flat out section. And I think we just tagged the back of the Corvette, which was unfortunate. And there we go, past a Suzuki Swift Group 4. None of them posing a threat whatsoever. So I, this actually happened, I think, on the end of lap 4 as well. One of the laps was really slow. Uh, but I just twitched out through the dip, I was trying to take it fully committed, um, it just twitched out on me into the final lap, so it, I think it was lap 4 or 5, maybe lap 5, that was the other slow lap, um, you see there, I've still got 1.1 laps of fuel remaining, Th this car does it all, I'm leading by a minute and 17 seconds, get a little bit slidey. Um, I was really trying to push for a faster lap time but I kept uh, eating the wall or spinning around. So that was the car that we overtook for second. I don't know whereabouts I lapped up to in that race. And then again Laguna Seca is a track that this car shouldn't really suit. This is a far more handling intensive track lots of long corners that make your life difficult um, not really something that a power build would suit uh, so 10 laps of Laguna and we've got plenty of fuel as soon as I saw how fuel was ticking over I don't think I looked at it after that um, at least not for a while can you see how much it wants to slide? It really wants to bring that tail round. Um, and now we settled, the fuel is still registering 12 odd laps or so here at Laguna. And there we go, past the CT. So, yeah, th this car is a solid all rounder for some performance points. If you needed help with it, Like for a car building for 700 performance points I think this is the way to go it's certainly the most enjoyable car I've used so far um, at multiple tracks certainly Le Mans the Sylvia is good but everywhere else I'd probably choose this of the ones I've made so far um, the NSX is quite good to drive the Corvette's quite good to drive um, I've got a couple of others that are quite good to drive but as a performance and maximizing what the car can do this is the best that you're going to get so there we are around the outside of turn one I think there's a little bit of contact on the exit but there's not much I could have done about that Yeah, we've made this so easy. All of the 700 points races this car is going to make easy for you. So heading up into, I think, turn 4 or turn 5. Um, come up behind the M4. Another car that's quite a good car in Group 4. And blitz it at the top of the hill through the fast kink. It holds it quite well. And that's really good it actually through the corks you would have a look here how stable it is and then to first gear it is stable you don't need to work it too hard this corner I find really catches me out in Grand Turismo 7 and there it slides a little bit um, but I think this car is also very forgiving without traction control considering it's it's a road car and road cars handle differently to the race cars um, again still got the minus two on the front bias I don't actually recall tyre wear affecting the racing too much um, at least for this one so we're going to come up behind 
the podium positions there over the bump that didn't really upset it too much um, certainly other cars would have been thrown into the gravel as I experienced quite badly today doing the S7 license um, that video will be coming out next week or the following week um, I don't understand why the Suzuki in Group 4 got away so well maybe it's a handling car and suited this handling track more so this car certainly slidey but it's controllable and there are far less forgiving cars you could use so up into the corkscrew on the brakes about the start of the white and running it a little deep maybe um, but no real drama through there definite drama through this corner um, but yeah I don't have much more to say for this video I'm going to leave this one here thank you very much for watching really hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching to the end hopefully this build will help you if you struggle with 700 performance points but you do need that 787B engine swap I'm going to leave this one here thank you for watching hope you have a great day hopefully see you in the next one and until then bye for now